If you use Ableton Live for multiple uses, maybe editing, recording a podcast, recording vocals, recording a full band, then you should be taking advantage of Ableton Live's template feature. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to very quickly and the fastest way to get started and start creating in Ableton Live when you're using it for multiple uses. So Ableton Live has this really incredible feature that you can access from the browser. You can go to Live's browser, you click the show hide button up here in the upper left hand corner of the screen, and there's this template feature. So you can see there's some default templates that get included. Uh, you can see I've already added some templates here. This really is a fantastic way to really kind of set the stage and get everything ready for you based on what you're doing. So let's walk through a couple scenarios here. Let's say for me, one of the things I often do is record vocals for a podcast. So I want to set up a uh, podcast template that's specific to my needs and use. So uh, I don't need any mini tracks. So I'm going to delete all of those. I've got a bunch of audio tracks in this session. So uh, I'm going to have two audio tracks here. Now this typically when I'm um, doing this, I am going to record myself and then I'm going to record my wife, Amber. So I've got two audio tracks set up. Uh, audio from default is channel one, channel two. So that's great. That's ready to go. Uh, but I, can, I tend to always add the same audio effects for this particular kind of usage. So for me, uh, I go to audio effects here. I tend to always have a utility on my audio track. So we'll add that to Amber's track. We'll double click to add utility to this track. Uh, I also like having a compressor. So I'm going to add a compressor to both of our tracks. Okay, so we'll add this. Um, and then I tend to add a reverb to both uh, vocals just so we have it in case we need it. So I'll go down here and again, we'll choose reverb. We'll drop that on Amber's track and then we'll drop this on my track. So effectively what I've got here is like the starting session for whenever I go to record podcast uh, vocals, everything's ready to go. Now I wanna save this as a template and this is, could not be any easier to do in Ableton Live. So let's go up to the file menu here and we're gonna scroll down and you'll see save live set as template. Now, previously in Ableton Live, we were forced to basically only have one template, which was our default set. And if you always use Ableton Live in the same way, maybe you choose using default set, but saving this as a template is a really effective way to again, have it for multiple uses. So in this case, let's save our live set as template. You'll see that show up uh, in the browser here. And I'm gonna say Will's podcast setup. Okay, we'll hit save. Now that's in my user library here, but let's actually go back up to templates and now you see Will's podcast setup uh, shows up there. So to access this, let's open a brand new live set and we go, okay, it's time to record a podcast. All I have to do is go to the browser, go to templates, double click, and that's gonna open up my podcast setup. Now, let me show you one other setup. Let's say I also like to compose record lots of uh, instruments, um, uh, MIDI instruments in particular. And there's a couple presets that I like to start with. Something for drums, something for bass, something for pads, leads. Let's set that up really quickly. So I'm gonna open a new live session here. Uh, and let's just add a couple instruments. Now for the sake of time, I'm just gonna drag a few things in. We'll drag in an operator. We'll call this my default bass track here. Let's go to drums. Let's say my 909 kit is default, right? So we'll, we'll drag that in. We'll name this drums. Um, let's say that we, let's delete these audio tracks. We don't need this for this particular session. Um, let's go back to instruments and let's say that uh, we just want a grand piano. So I'm gonna search grand piano here. Uh, that's gonna just show me, great, there's my piano. So we'll add that in, we'll rename it to piano. Let's add one more just for the sake of time. Let's say uh, pad, right? So what kind of pads we have here. Instrument rack, uh, wide pad, perfect. We're gonna drop that in. Uh, I think if I remember correctly, wide pad, yeah. Wide pad is a custom preset I actually created. So uh, again, this isn't just default Ableton Live stuff. Um, I can load things into this, uh, whatever that is, extra plugins uh, into my default template, which is great. So let's rename this, we'll call this pad. Uh, and instead of hitting save, I'm gonna go again up to the file menu here. We're gonna do save live set as template. And we're gonna call this uh, comp uh, composing template, right? All right. And then now I can go up to templates and I can access this from absolutely anywhere. So there's my composing template. There's my podcast setup, which is great. Now let's say after all of that, uh, maybe you're in a season season where you're not doing a whole lot of podcasting, but uh, you are, um, you know, maybe doing your composing. And that's the main usage of Ableton Live, or at least for this particular season. And everything is about making it happen as fast as possible. You can save an extra step by going to the template section of the browser here. And let's say, okay, again, I'm just doing a lot of composing. I'm gonna right click on the composing template and I'm gonna do set default live set. And now every single time that I open Ableton Live, it's going to load with this default template. You may have not even noticed the change, 
because we were on that template before, but it's gonna open with that default template, which is great. And again, you may be going, well, this is fantastic, but what if I wanna go back? Again, it's incredibly simple to do. I can go back to default live set here, right click and do set default live set. And now when I open Ableton Live, it defaults back to the default. So that's a look at how to use Ableton Live in a way that's very fast, efficient, flexible, allows you to get started as quickly as possible. If you want more tips and tricks like that, learning how to use Ableton Live on stage most efficiently or in the studio most effectively like this, then consider subscribing. It's completely free to you and enable the bell icon so you don't miss out. I post two new pieces of content every single week, Mondays and Fridays, uh, and I don't want you to miss out because I want you to learn all these tips and tricks so that you can work faster and get more ideas out of your head into Ableton Live. Thanks so much for watching this one, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.